Hi there, F96 here. Today I'm going to show you how to create uh, smooth bevels along the intersections of two objects, say for example uh, two cylinders. Uh, so what you see here are variations of bevel uh, widths and let's just get right to it. So we'll start off with a cylinder in front view and then we're going to um, lengthen this cylinder and we're going to duplicate the cylinder one more time and rotate it. And we're going to make a smaller cylinder and we're going to attach it to this larger cylinder like this. Okay, so of course the edges are not smooth. Now I'm not suggesting this is the only way, it's just over the few months that I've been practicing I think uh, I found a way that is kind of consistent and doesn't give you any hiccups so you can move forward with uh, the modeling process uh, rather than hitting on some snags and stuff like that. So I think a lot of people will use the boolean modifier to uh, boolean this um, cookie cutter cylinder away or merge them. I think that's the simplest way to do it and let's apply it and delete this cookie cutter cylinder and there you have it. You have a single mesh that is made up of two cylinders stuck together. Um, edit this mesh and uh, select the edge which you cannot with the regular alternate right click because the edges are broken. They're broken by these vertical lines as you can see here. Okay so the other way to select it would be to use vertex selection and circle select the vertices. After that you can apply a bevel. So let's go back to shaded view, hit control B, and the first thing you'll realize is that uh, there are a lot of overlapping faces that you see here. It's rather inevitable um, and it happens quite a lot. Sometimes you could get lucky and not have a single one of these overlapping faces or what 3D Studio Max importers would call rat's nests. Uh, so and um, I think the, the whole purpose of doing it this way is to maintain the poly count as much as possible and not introduce any extraneous uh, edges or vertices than is necessary just to have a smooth bevel uh, along the uh, intersection edges. So one of the things you can do here is to clean up the model. Uh, just, you know, do a merge of these vertices. Yeah, it's a little bit of work, but since it's a low poly model, uh, the amount of work done isn't as much. Let's be strategic about where we place that cylinder. That's <laughs> just a little bit too much. Uh, so let's just undo all the way to the Boolean point. And uh, let's select this cylinder. And let's see if we can just sort of scale it up. Now that kind of defeats the purpose of having a precise model. But let's just do it anyway. If you put it in a strategic location, it's possible that you would end up with less overlapping faces. So let's check it out. Select these vertices and control B. Yeah, so there's less, but uh, you're kind of limited to the width of this bevel because there's another edge over here that isn't cut and uh, you're gonna have to manually cut that. But let's say we don't overdo it. You're still going to end up with some overlapping faces, but let's fix it up right now. It's only gonna take a couple of minutes or even less um, because uh, it's a low poly model. And so the the good thing about working with low polys is, of course, the cleanup work is a lot less intense. Right, that's okay. One last one here. And once you're done, well, of course, you still can't quite select um, the edge ring in one go because they're broken. So this is a good enough edge, to be honest. Um, and you're still maintaining a low poly count. Then you can go and select smooth shading and then add an edge split modifier. So yeah you have one way of doing it. Now there's another variation to this that allows you to create bigger bevel widths. So let's undo the whole thing and get back to where the uh, boolean modifier is still active here. Alright, so now what we do here in this variation, by the way the first way is already finished and uh, thank you very much for watching, blah blah blah. <laughs> and so this is the other way which will allow you to have thicker bevels. So you duplicate this original uh, cylinder, let's go to wireframe, you duplicate it and then you scale it up to about this much and the outer cylinder is going to represent the width of the bevel. Now we want a bigger bevel so that when we look at it in uh, front view you have a bevel that starts from here slanting and sloping all the way like that. Right, and so what you do from the side view is you scale the cylinder along the z-axis to however far you want say here and now Instead of booleaning, is that even a word, uh, the inner cylinder, uh, you're going to boolean the outer cylinder. Let's see. Let's just select the outer cylinder and apply the union and delete the cookie cutter cylinder. 
there. And then you select the outer shell, if you will, and select the, uh, the cap face over here and move it in to about that much. And then select the inner cylinder and select the inner cap face yeah, and move it out like that. Then you select both objects and join them together. And then go back to edit mode and while these two edge rings are selected, you press Control E and create a bridge edge loop. And then you select the outer edge and dissolve it. X dissolve. There. Now you have an edge ring that is selectable in one go. So you could just Alt, right click, and you can select that edge ring. When that happens, you can also do a loop cut along this cylinder. So let's create two additional loop cuts and then move the this edge. I'm just going to say this, right? So we <laughs> move this edge um, maybe here and then use vertex slide or a slide vertices and sort of slide it. And when you do that, you'll notice that the uh, edge will conform to the shape of the intersection shape, right? So let's just also do a scale, scale it down a bit. And let's maybe move it back out a little bit, all right? So there, and then we move this edge loop, move it this time, not uh, shift V. So let's, okay, so you have this done. Next, you're going to select both of these edges, these, these edge rings, um, and then do a bull, uh, uh, bevel, control B. So you have a much smoother bevel that is unbroken and kind of maintains this low poly count cylinder, right? You could even do so with diff you know, cylinders of different poly resolutions. So let's say we put back that shading, add in the edge split, and there you have a really, really smooth bevel between the two cylinders and you've maintained a low poly count. Hurrah! This technique is fairly good because you can create joins between very irregular shapes. So let me just show you what I mean. Um, here is a Merlin 1C rocket engine and we're looking at the impulse turbine section where there's this kind of shape and uh, there's a cylinder and then there's another cylinder which is kind of flattened out to look like a, a A shape. So you can join these two kind of objects and I have also done another file where I've joined this with the turbine, uh, uh, another section of the turbine, all right? Okay, what other examples? Another example would be the main, f the, um, main fuel valve here. So let's just go there, where you have this cylinder half dome and another cylinder connecting to it with a uh, smooth uh, mesh here in between. Okay, so there's a lot of uses for this uh, technique. Um, like I said, there's a lot of ways to do this, um, and this is not the only way. It's just one of the better ways that I've found that doesn't give you any problems, and you can move on with your modeling more than uh, backtracking and fixing things. Okay, so that's the end of the lesson here, but let's just continue for another minute so I can show you some of the other ways that I've tried that um, I kind of disqualified because it's not really workable. All right, so of course, there are several things you can do to create such uh, smooth bevels. Now, if, for example, you're doing a uh, cube and you have a cylinder stuck on top of it and you have an edge that needs to be smooth, one of the ways to do it would be to just do good old-fashioned modeling hard work. Create the plane, extrude it, um, then you draw a circle on top of it and then you connect some vertices to its vertices, then you extrude the circle and then you do a bevel on the edge. It's rather clean doing it that way and you uh, don't introduce any extraneous uh, polygons. Now the other way of course is to use the subsurf modifier. So you would build a, um, a coarse mesh and then yeah, try to, <laughs> try to uh, have the subsurf modifier conform to that shape, which is kind of cumbersome, um, if not impossible, right? Because you're going to introduce a lot of new edges just to make sure that the subsurf plugin can try and conform to that shape. One of the other problems you might get when you're using this method is if you increase the density of the mesh, like, you know, increase the subdivisions, then your mesh is going to kind of shrink like a latex object, and you're going to have to tweak some of the uh, coarse mesh uh, and make sure it's, it stays conformant to a size requirement that you, that you have. Um, it's great for some cases, all right? So, um, well, the other way, I doubt if anyone would be using it this way, but um, is to use the metaballs. There is no cylinder for a metaball. They only have a capsule that's uh, 
that can be stretched just along the x-axis though. You edit the metaball and scale to the x direction and uh, copy it maybe. Now let's make a duplicate, rotate it. Now automatically you will get a nice smooth join here like that. That's nice, but there are certain caveats. First of all, the mesh topology is kind of funky uh, in that if you rotate then you'll get not cylindrical or circle edges your edge loops are pretty much bye-bye alright so the other thing is if you should scale one of these objects your mesh topology changes so you're adding more vertices as you scale up alright the other thing is that if you should select one of the objects you would think that it's independent and if you should ch convert this into a mesh well guess what anything that is a metaballs will be converted into a mesh uh, it's great if you're doing a lot of toy modeling. Um, it's it's great. Maybe you could just cut off one section, like the T-join portion, and then just use that. Uh, but overall, Metaballs has potential. Anyway, this video is a little bit long, so thank you very much for watching. Hope you liked it. Bye!